Okay, so here's one more video for uh, class 20, and I just wanted to put a bow on the top of it, of the computational fluid dynamics, to try to have like a, just a very, very rough explanation on how it numerically solves things, okay? So this is sort of like a little bit of an introduction to numerical solutions, um, and I probably have some of the details, maybe just a little fuzzy, but hopefully you'll get sort of an idea in case you're curious. So the different methods of solving uh, computational fluid dynamics are finite volume, finite difference, which is the one I'm going to talk about, um, finite element, and spectral methods. And I got this from a source. I'm not really quite sure what they mean by spe spectral methods, but um, it's certainly <clears throat> very uh, uh, has some amount of similarity to uh, what's being done here so he, here is uh, a, a grid right so we, we talked about a grid and creating a grid and so the, these are like little discrete points and we might have like start out you know some initiation numbers uh, from some type of um, uh, assumptions uh, that are being made and what we're going to do is we're going to apply Navier Stokes um, equations to these points and try to get them to be true. And those Navier-Stokes equations are partial differential equations. So we'll start off with our numerical methods and just sort of like a reminder of a method to uh, describe partial derivatives. And so here is a, a method to describe the um, or, or to break something down into partial derivatives. Let me say that instead, right? So this is uh, a Taylor series or a second cousin to a Taylor series, I think. And if you want to instead break this apart for, to, to isolate a uh, particular uh, partial derivative, what you could say is you, you could say in, in a simple manner is we have this uh, uh, linear equation and then a bunch of extra stuff that's gonna be really, really small compared to this main one, right? So we just really kind of uh, um, just turn this thing on its ear and bunch together all the higher order terms. And in numerical solutions, that's, that, that's really our, our idea is that if we could crunch numbers enough, we can take care of these higher order terms. And so this, what you're looking at here is a forward difference method right here where we take, here, here is the spot uh, that we're really interested in, but, but we're gonna take the one that's, it, the, the next one after it, um, whether it's be by position or by time, and then divide by um, the, the, the increment between the grids, right? And so here's like the forward difference idea. Here's the spot we care about. We draw a line maybe using a slope and, and an anticipated uh, th a point afterwards and then an increment, right? So we're, it's, it's all like a slope-based kind of idea. Um, th there's also backwards uh, um, difference, right, like that. And we look at, the, at, at a previous step and make the comparison. Um, and we also have like a central difference where we take one before it or, or the, excuse me, the next one after it and the one that happened before it, and then take those differences. And that actually does a better job, if it's in this slope-based kind of um, idea, of capturing the slope. Um, so here is how that gets implemented, right? So on this previous page, all we were doing was sort of defining a linearized version of a, differ uh, of a partial differential, right? And, and remember, when we take the derivative of something, it's just a slope. Right? So we are taking sort of the slope idea, but this is the partial derivative um, version of the thing. So we, to implement this, we can really we can simplify Navier-Stokes and uh, for a situation where we really only have like one dimensional flow, right? So we have the velocity is in the x direction, but the points that we're looking at are going to be in the y direction. So our goal really when we were done with this, if I could find uh, my pen, is, you know, what our expected thing is to find a velocity distribution that looks like this, right? So we're looking for a, um, a, a function um, based on these boundary conditions. 
And that's really what our expected result is going to be. Um, and this is also, we, we, in, in this particular case, we're going to go with uh, uh, unsteady flow, right? We're, so we're going to, it has a time basis to it. Um, we, you'll, you'll note that we have uh, uh, kinematic viscosity and a shear term. But this is the simplified Navier-Stokes equation for this scenario, all right? And if we take and we expand these uh, um, partial der derivatives, uh, um, we, could, we could find these results right here. So what you're seeing here is the linearized uh, version of the Navier-Stokes equation for this scenario. Right. And of course, this is just to try to make a simple step. And it, we have the statement here that this is actually the forward time difference uh, um, over here on this side. And it's actually a central spatial difference right there. Kind of what you had seen in this, what I, what I was marking down here. Here's the forward time difference. And here's a spatial, and they're, they're saying in a spatial central difference. And you can see that it's also by the square on there because this is the second derivative. Well, if you resolve um, this stuff back in here into uh, uh, solve it for the step that we care about, um, and and this by the way, this is for a particular time for a particular time step. So we won't we won't worry about the time steps. We we will say okay, well we're doing it for a particular time step. You can isolate this and, and we we're. we're getting rid of some terms that are kind of constants. You know, these are some to the time step was decided for us, the viscosity was decided, and also the grid size was decided. So they, they put this all together as sigma. Don't get confused, that does, that's not stress. They're just using, and it's certainly not surface tension. That's just a variable that they decided to, to make this thing look small. And one thing that you'll notice in this is that sigma we need, in order to, to keep this from getting negative, it needs to, um, or, or going to zero, it needs to be a something that's going to be uh, um, greater than, or excuse me, I guess less than uh, uh, one half, right? So th this term needs to be less than one half in order to prevent uh, this thing from being unstable. Uh, and because of that, this simple example, they, they wouldn't use this. They'd use something that would had uh, uh, that was more robust in, in terms of uh, the, the numerical assumptions as part of this or the numerical technique. But this is, again, just a, the simplest of explanations. Um, so anyway, they have this point that like maybe N, this is the one where we're going to start with. And they take the point um, that happens the next point and the previous point. And by the way, these, these are all numbers. These are numbers that are... Um, with a because you have you have like the start off uh, maybe you just apply the same velocity uh, assumption everywhere to it but this equation needs to be held true so we have sort of a test right so we're um, may, maybe there's a, a better assumption to make to get the thing started but it's just going to be a number crunching episode where we go and we we plug in the numbers and we see that oh that's not good enough and we go back and we iterate and uh, we find an answer and then we compare it to what we have and then we then we crunch it again and we look for the most important word is convergence we look for a convergence um, as we plug in numbers and uh, and cycle through so that's sort of the idea right hopefully it gives you sort of a taste in the idea of what what the method is for uh, trying to converge to a solution by way of numerically solving the new Navier-Stokes equations. All right, so I'm not sure if it was helpful, but uh, I, I decided to try to take a shot at, at an explanation, and so that's it. So we'll start on other topics again soon.